How's it going? Uh, this will be pretty quick. We're going to go over um, uh, what is MPEG-H um, concepts for workflow for HOA, which is higher order ambisonics, uh, an AR concept, and then I'll ask uh, any questions. Um, uh, first off, THX, we've been around for 36 years now in film, uh, and uh, we've since been investigating VR and AR and um, the emergence of, of these new interactive mediums for, for gaming and, and movie consumption. Um, so we have three business groups, cinema, home, and mobile. Uh, pretty explanatory. Cinema is for large format cinema. Home is for like PC or uh, home theater equipment. And then mobile is basically anything that's uh, a mobile device, so laptops and PCs and um, mobile phones. Um, so a little bit about what we're doing in spatial audio. Um, so we look at, um, you know, there's three different concepts. So you have headlock stereo, which is, you know, just stereo. We don't hear in stereo. Um, we have headlock 5.1, which is another format for, you know, spatial audio over headphones, and then headlocked HOA, which, uh, an HOA is, is um, a representation of a sphere, uh, and it has several advantages over uh, channel, traditional channel-based audio, which is the 5.1 scenario. Um, so let's jump into MPEG-H. Is, is anybody familiar with MPEG-H? A few. So MPEG-H is an ATSC and DVB and 3GPP and ITU and et cetera, et cetera, uh, industry standard for delivery of content. Um, there's several parts. Part three is about um, audio. Um, so MPEG-H is able to carry channels, objects, and ambisonics all in the same container, uh, and then it gets muxed with a video um, for delivery of, of traditional content. Um, South Korea has already deployed MPEG-H. Uh, it's already in market. There's already devices in market that decode MPEG-H. China has adopted MPEG-H as the next generation standard for uh, OTA and OTT. Um, the Samsung and LG uh, already have devices in market. Um, obviously, the ATSC, is, which is the, the standards body um, that, that mandates how, how content should be encoded. Uh, MPEG-H is part of that, along with Dolby AC4. Um, VRAF, which is relevant for VR and AR, is the industry forum. They have adopted MPEG-H as a codec for delivery of um, content to AR and VR headsets. Uh, and then DVB is another one. Um, so the benefits of, of why MPEG-H is important for, for content developers, um, it allows you to mix in one format and deliver a single stream to any device. So if you want to deliver a mix of content to a home, you can use MPEG-H. That same mix can be translated to headphones or to VR. It can be rotated. So be, because it's, uh, well, using HOA, you can rotate the sphere. So if you're in a three degrees of freedom experiment or experience, uh, you can rotate the codec. So you're actually ingesting head tracking metadata back into the codec, and it's real time decoding as you turn. So other codecs don't do that. Uh, they have to render and then interpolate the, the changes as they have uh, movement. So if you have 5.1, you're interpolating a huge gap between minus 30 and minus 150. So there's a huge gap of interpolation that needs to be accounted for. With ambisonics, you don't have to do that. Higher order ambisonics is a more dense representation of a sphere, so you, you have less interpolation and less air in your content. Um, so it goes all the way up to 22.2 if, if someone wants to mix in 22.2. Uh, it has superior compression. It's up to 600 to 1 in compression ratio. Um, and that's with using ambisonics. It's about 400 to 1 in, in non-ambisonics uh, mode. Uh, so it's about 1 gig of data. It gets reduced down to 2.7 megabytes. Uh, this is kind of just some simple math. 
So we took a, a 54 second file, it had 162 audio stems, it was like a, a trailer. Um, and uh, it was at 24 bit 48K, it was about roughly 1.2 uh, gigs. Uh, after compression, it's down to 2.64 megabytes. Um, and then obviously there's other codecs out there and you can see like 7.1.4, it's double the, double the amount. Um, in uh, reduced quality. So this is kind of going over, you know, uh, the concepts behind MPEG-H and how you can deliver it to a consumer. Um, so object-based audio and scene-based audio. So you can so you can mix um, objects are referred to in, in different contexts. One context of an object is. Uh, <laughs> a piece of audio that has associated metadata with it and it describes its location. Another concept of an object is, is just a separate track of, of dialogue. Uh, so for uh, normal terrestrial broadcast, you have dialogue tracks within the objects and then you have your main delivery track. So you have English, Korean, and Spanish, and then you're just switching those objects. The other definition of object, was, was I talked about earlier, is pure object-based rendering, which is usually uh, metadata to describe where that object is in 3D space. So the a visual concept of, of uh, the difference between everything that's going on. So here you have the entire image. There's obviously going to be audio in this entire place. Um, with loudspeakers, you're only going to get the azimuth, which is horizontal with your ears. Um, objects, you can pinpoint certain locations to mix in with those objects, or with the 5.1. So you basically have the as in the scene and then you'd have separate objects. And then the HOA is the entire representation of that scene because you're capturing the spherical representation of audio from all angles. And then obviously you can render HOA to loudspeakers, to headsets, to headphones. Um, so it's a lot more flexible to have one piece of content production in your workflow that you don't need to do a 5.1 mix and a 7.1 mix and then a binaural mix. You could do one ambisonics mix and monitor on anything and then it'll allow you to have one you know, a content delivery workflow. These are the bits uh, at a high level of what the encoder and the decoder look like. Um, so basically you have your HOA coefficients that go into an analysis uh, and decomposition. They get assigned uh, to transport channels and gain, and then they go through the core encoder um, that reduces the, the payload. And then the decoder is actually doing the inverse of that. But the decoder is intelligent, that you can tell the decoder what you want to do. So it's basically just software. You're telling a decoder, I want to render an HOA scene to 5.1, then it decomposes the, five, the HOA signal to 5.1 discrete locations, or 7.1 or 7.1.4, or straight to binaural. The other thing inside the uh, HOA decoder is a set of HRTFs. So HRTFs are head-related transfer functions. That's what allows you to hear spatial audio over headphones. So there is a HRTF inside the decoder, so you could go straight from content uh, in the bitstream, straight to binaural, and it would use the in, the inbox, basically, HRTFs. Um, this is a concept uh, tool that we created to allow an experiment with mixing in uh, ambisonics. Um, so it takes in any type of content. It takes in ADM, it takes in Eigen mics, it takes in Sennheiser Ambio mics, um, and it can take in just normal stem. Right, just a normal audio stem, and you can place that as an object in that 3D space up to the left, uh, and then you can change its orientation, yaw, pitch, and roll, um, and its elevation, its, its size. It's, you can automate its movement through space. It's, it's basically just an object-based um, panner. Uh, but it's doing everything in the background to create that as an amb ambisonics file. Um, and then you can obviously monitor on mono, stereo, uh, you know, all the way up to 22.2. You can also monitor straight to binaural, and there's a couple different HRTFs in there that allow you to 
audition different uh, HRTF data sets to, to see which one you prefer. You could also load in your own if you have it. Uh, so a, a bit about 5G and MPEG-H and AR is if you are creating an experience where you're walking through this parking lot, which is right up here, uh, and you want to have audio be fed to that user, you could do edge computing, right? So you could store that, the MPEG-H file, that is called an MHOS file, on the edge. And as the user is walking through, you could distribute that file down to them, and it could be decoded in real time on their person, right? So they would be able to hear as they're moving through this place, you're streaming new information to them in real time uh, that's being decoded on the edge, delivered to the, to the user. And as they rotate, you're giving new coordinates feedback back to the, the MPEG-H file that allows it to rotate and send those new coefficients down to the device and render the new orientation of where the user's looking. Um, the future of MPEG-H uh, is the next iteration, which is MPEG-I. Uh, which has six degrees of freedom. So the MPEG-H only has three DOF, which is you all, you know, basically you can move your head. Uh, MPEG-I, which is six DOF, would allow you to move from one ambisonic scene to the other as you interpolate through these scenes. So you could have an HOA representation here, and as I walk to here, you merge both of those bit streams together and you have a perfect blend. Um, so that's one concept of, of using MPEG-H in um, an AR, scenario. I don't have anything else. It's all up to questions now. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, two questions. One, what order of PCMs are you saying is implemented? Sixth? Sixth. Yeah. He asked about which order of ambisonics. It's sixth order, which is roughly 49 channels of PCM information. Yeah, you can talk to me after. Yeah. He was asking about the tools for evaluation. Yeah. Uh, do you think the workflow as far as the PC and how would you capture it now in that window that you said, but with with uh, CG, so if you're capturing the sound in uh, Maya or any kind of 3D rendering software or in the Unity real time you know, how would you capture that sound in the file itself? You would just encode it. it. It's just it's just a file encoder, so you, it would work perfectly with with Unity or Unreal or Wise uh, as middleware game engines. It's just a it's a method of of it's just like MP3, right? So MP3, Wave, Orbis, OGG, these are all flack. These are all containers that hold audio information. This is just a different way to hold audio information that's that's highly effective at compression and allows you to hold much more data in, in a smaller payload. So if you were mixing, uh, if you were doing Unity, right, so you're creating your scene and you have all your audio assets, you would have an MPEG asset that would be in your, your <laughs> asset library that would get called at a certain time in, in the event timeline. You can synthetically, so you, you don't need to have an ambisonics microphone to create ambisonics. So you can, you can just use a synthesizer and play music all day and then you take that file and you reconstruct it how you want it to be in three dimensions and then you encode that. With the software. Yeah, with the software, yeah. So you would create that, you would create an ambisonics asset and then you would compress that into MPEG-H, and then the, the rendering engine would then decompress it on playback. Yeah. Any other questions? So the lights are like. Hi. Hi. OpenXR? Open yeah. I'm not familiar with what OpenXR is. Is this part of open standard? It is an open, it's an ISO standard, yeah. So it's a video as well? Yes. It, it, it muxes with MP4 and MPEG Dash. It's part of the MPEG, H MPEG Dash Alliance. So it, it's just another container that goes into all of existing video formats. Yeah. 
Any other questions? I can't see the back of the room. Yeah, if you want to talk more about workflows and production and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll give you all your time back if you, nobody has any other questions. All right, thank you.